Welcome in, you are listening to another episode of the Keep the Change podcast and we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one, it's called Fake Titties, Real Money <laughs> and I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Mikey's got no idea what's going on and before we rip into it, I just want to say that we're not uh, against fake titties or for them. Yeah, anything <laughs> like that, it's just a title so before you freak out and email me and say you're ruining women's rights or something uh, like that, um, this is not going to be rude or anything like that. But anyway, fake titties, real money. So I want to tell you a story, mate. So uh, my business partner has just moved into a new neighborhood and he's like to me, mate, um, I've seen this helicopter land a couple of times. And I was like, sick. I love helicopters for some reason because I just think it's fascinating that people- Because they stink of money. (laughs) (laughs) But people will spend money to then go sit inside something and a blade just swings around like that and that could stop at any moment. And But anyway, I'm not an engineer. This is, yeah. Yeah. There's a thing called auto rotation. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can land a helicopter without the engine going. Really? Yeah, yeah. You reverse pitch and then- Swing it back the other way as you're about to hit the ground. I tell you, mate, it's just like how they figure out how to float those big cruise ships. Exactly the same. It's yeah, just, it's just weird how, how physics the, works. How the water doesn't just go <laughs> everywhere. It's just mind blowing how smart engineers are. It is. Anyway, Phil is very analytical and like very, uh, he, he could be a detective. He could be. Yeah. So it's before impressive. you know it, like he knows <laughs> yeah. who the dude is yeah. and how he's made the money. Yeah. And he's telling me, and basically he's like, yeah, so uh, the chopper has this on it. So then I look up that under the something register and then I get the registered company. I go to the company's office. Then I figure out, okay, there's their names. And then I'm searching that and then bang, here's who it is. And this is what they do. And I'm like- <laughs> Fake titties, <laughs> but real money. Yeah. And it just made me, I, he was telling me, I was like, man, this is just such a, a good example of how much information is actually on the internet. Uh, but ah, now I see where we're going with this. <laughs> yeah. But that allows you then to, to try and figure out. So, because when I go to the airport, sometimes I'll see a private jet and mm. I think, I wonder who's that is. You so can look I, it up. Yeah. So yeah. Then I get the little thing at the end of it and trying to have a bit of a search what sort of plane is it what are they worth and then my brain goes to like how do they afford that because when i see a helicopter as people have probably heard me say i i use it as a reminder for my brain to be like someone figured out how to pay for that someone can pay for the fuel someone can pay for the pilot Mm -hmm. and it's going somewhere and it's just a reminder like whoa what sort of level are they thinking on Mm -hmm. when i'm freaking out about you know can i pay my parking fine or whatever what are they doing like what do they know that I don't know? Same thing when I see a private jet. I try and see like, what does that actually cost? You know, what would it cost to fuel that? That's nuts. Um, you know, I used to shake the, as you said the other day, shake the petrol bloody thing to get the last drip out. I'm like, I wonder <laughs> yeah. if they do that when they're fueling their private jet. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and anyway, I was thinking about it in terms of, okay, so you've got to have a helicopter. You've probably got to be in a vehicle that can bring you quite a bit of money mm. right and this now allows us if we want to get geeky and go and search for what these people are doing you can probably see it so who knows this person might not even be uh like might just be borrowing the helicopter don't know but in this instance it tied back to cosmetic surgery mm-hmm. and it got me thinking about how much money is in something like that and i don't know because i've never really looked into it mm. So I had a quick Google. I've got some surgeons that are clients. They do all right. Uh, yeah. Shock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, so I Googled a, around breast implants and I found this article from Yahoo Finance and it basically says breast implants market size to surpass USD 5.34 billion by 2030, exhibiting a CAGR of 7.3%. My brain is like, what's a CAGR? Calculated annual growth rate. Yeah, compound annual growth rate. So basically the market is compounding by 7.3% every year. Now, this brings me to another point. Where the fuck can you get 7% returns? (laughs) The fuck, man, what's your money going to be worth in 30 years? It doesn't matter anyway. (laughs) Oh, where do you get the 7% from? Maybe fake titties. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Stop thinking like an idiot yeah. and start opening your eyes to what is possible out there. So another stat here. Every year, about 400,000 people receive silicon breast implants in the United States. 400,000 people. Wow. Every year. According to data from the US Food and Drug Administration, a majority of those implants need to be replaced 
within 10 years due to the buildup of scar tissue and other complications. Wow, it's a recurring revenue business. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably, if it's recurring revenue like that, it's probably an inflation hedge too because it's going to be more expensive in 10 years than it is now. Well, inflation doesn't average 7.3% compounding no. annually, mate. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it is at the moment, <laughs> but, but you know, it's about 2%. So when you start to do things like this, instead of being like rich asshole in a helicopter, fuck them, mm. must have inherited it, et cetera, and start going, hang on, what's going on here? How are they flying in in a chopper here? Mm. You start to learn so much more and you start to think about all these different things. And that sort of brings me back to when we talk about choose the vehicle that you're going to be in. Because naturally our brains are going to go, well, how could I get into fake titties or breast implants and stuff like that because I don't have those skills. That's okay. That's not the principle. The principle is what's an industry that you could potentially be a part of where it's going to continue to compound? Mm. There's nothing in these articles. These are from July 2023. Nothing like, oh, the industry slowed down because of um, the cost of living. Yeah, yeah. That could, I was, it must be impacted by inflation. Well, nothing about inflation in here. <laughs> and it just keeps going and going. And there is all sorts of data to to basically explain why this is happening um, for that industry. But it doesn't just have to be this. And then it reminds me of who's the richest person in the, ma- in, in the world at the moment. Bernard. Exactly. And what does he sell? This hat, brother. Boom. I mean, this one's fake from uh, Bali, just FYI, but hey, no one knows that, right? But that just comes back to status. Mm. And okay, I want to be seen to be wearing this because I'm cool. And more likely, I look like a fuckwit. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But also, it's highly practical, mate, because it's, uh, it's actually reversible as well. Oh, so, yeah, cool. So yeah. you remove the status, depending yeah. on which area yeah. you're walking around in. <laughs> Flick up a little bit of status. So I got my. Hat for Remy Wera. Oh, no. Perfect. Yeah. And then when I go back to Danny Burke, yeah. <laughs> I can flip it around yeah, nice. so that I don't get beaten up at the skate park like I used to when I was a teenager. <laughs> but oh, the, the principles here, are, you know, try and pick something. If you, if you want to make more money and you want to think about how you could go further with something, like try and ride a wave where the wave has a lot of momentum mm. and it's going somewhere yeah and it's it, it can be like part of a gigantic industry like you don't i think i reckon over the over the internet boom we've been a little bit like a netted i don't even know the word but like just surprised by like google and facebook and think that we have to invent platforms and, yeah and i just think like take those out of your mind's eye for a while and then just have a look around because there is other stuff Mm. and like you can see generally what's happening like i probably wouldn't start something at the moment that is going to connect to newspaper companies no because that trend might be dying yeah you know but there might be something that you could start like that's connected to cosmetic surgery Mm. because those guys have other things that are connected to those businesses as well. It doesn't have to be you have to be a surgeon. It might be you know about the way silicon works and can make it last 15 years instead of 10 or mm. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but there's all these things that bolt onto these big industry trends that are around it that will do very well as well. Yeah, and when you pull it back to okay because this actually breaks down the split between um, reconstructions of breasts versus people who are trying to improve the the look of them and then the different types that they get mm. and stuff when i started reading about it, i was like fuck i know way too much about this and i didn't take <laughs> yeah. i should have taken some of the notes because then i was feeding it back to taz and she's like man you've like we're supposed to be relaxing on holiday and you're yeah. searching data around fake breasts like calm down but you then go back to okay like what what else can you see from this in terms of you know people we love status and we love um, looking our best and things like that and so then I went into uh, Mecca which is a store with Taz and it was makeup yeah or like all sorts of shit yeah I've been in the mate fuck man this place was humming it is and wild I left there I said to Taz I'm like I just want to sit here for an hour and just try and figure out what's going on here because I'm like there are 
50 year old women in here there are like 15 year old girls and it is just a hive of activity i'm like there's staff everywhere this must be highly profitable to employ yeah, all yeah. of them there's specialists and face and those this lady's a specialist in eye creams and that one oh, i'll go and get that one because she it's knows it's just like that. a container of little brown powder that you're meant to wash off at the end of the day I was, what? that's wild eh so she told me that like what happens on social media if there's no water in this is that people go on social media and they get their product and they're like guys i've been so excited to finally try this and they like tap it or something and they put, put it on oh it feels so smooth oh my god this is great this is my new favorite i got this from mecca and then bang they just carry on with their life or something. I don't know. But I'm like, why are they doing that? Yeah, are they getting paid? Probably not. They're probably just trying to be like other people. But they've got 15-year-old girls in there. I can promise you some of them are getting fucking paid. Oh, yeah. 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 They're, but all ages of people. Yeah. And it comes back to, again, okay, we want to look good. We want to feel good. We want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and our skin. And we want to fit in. And uh, we want to look beautiful and most people don't even dig into like, why is this happening? You know, what, mm. what's going on? But we're being influenced and whatnot. So again, it might not be, you know, implants. It could be an industry where, you know, money's going to continue to flow there. Mm. Same with um, dental hygiene and things like that, where that's probably a good space where it doesn't seem there's advancements in technology there, but it seems like we still have to keep going. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And for a long time now, I've been brushing my teeth and the toothbrush looks pretty similar so when yeah. I was a kid and started learning how to do it to, yeah. to what it does now. But that's an area where money just seems to keep being spent and, and, and keeps going. So, you know, it could be that we think about, do we, you know, say you're in business, you might want to pick up clients in that space mm. uh, because they are likely to have a bit of protection away from inflation. It's or like if, my surgeons, man, they take out grunty loans. And when someone takes out a grunty loan, my income is directly linked to the size of the loan. Bingo. So I should probably chase down surgeons as my clients, yeah. right? Like that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about. You could go into a community of those people and be like, hey, I specialize in loans for surgeons mm. and your loan size is going to be larger and therefore your payday as well. Mm -hmm. So you can start to apply this thinking to all sorts of things. And I think as well for a lot of people uh, that might be getting started or they might be in the trades, but they feel like trades are hard work and whatnot. But I often talk about how that's such a good vehicle to income and wealth and if you start thinking about it from a macro level and just yet you might be fatigued in that industry at the moment but all the conversation at the moment seems to be about we need way more houses we need way more infrastructure like all of a sudden there's just a wave of that where it got real loud real quick with how shit's broken there's sh there's potholes in the road there's big sinkholes and stuff and it's like, whoa, where did all this come from? And I asked a guy who's been in the construction space for decades for a big, large company, beautiful thing, bumped into him the other day. And I was like, mate, like, what's the state of our infrastructure like in New Zealand? He's absolutely fucked, mate. And it's <laughs> like, well, it sounds like there's probably going to be a heap of work because people aren't going to accept shitty infrastructure. No. Eventually Once the free market will take over and, you know, if it doesn't happen via the public sector, the private sector will step, step in at some point and solve the problem. Yeah. yeah. And then I interview Rion from Smith & Sons. Yeah. And he's like to me, well, Smith & Sons started because people who built homes with GJ Gardeners would go back and say, we want to renovate this place because they buy their, their home, they love that, and then they go down the cycle of, well, let's make it look a bit better or let's do the kitchen or, or whatever. Mm. So they went back to GJ's and GJ's, but at a high level, it sounds like had to make a decision. Do we get into renovations or do we start something else for that? And so then Smith & Sons have gone nationwide with doing renovations from like smaller, right? Basically off large. a lead source. Yeah. And that comes back to Kiwis. They want to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Then they want to make it look great. They want the lawn to good. You know, my, my mate sent me a selfie the other day with a uh, mate around his place. And the first thing he said is like, if I could don't comment on my lawn in the background. Until he said that, I'm like, I do not care about your lawn. But to him, <laughs> you know, so then we spend all this money renovating and making them look better and like, let's put a pool in or, or whatever. But again, it highlights that's probably a good wave to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, that just made me think there's a bit of a running joke in the industry that if you mow your lawn before you get a valuation done, 
pump it up. Really? <laughs> yeah, because it makes them look tidy. Wow. Yeah. So then the valuer, then I mean, that'd be a good industry to be in. You give a valuer. The valuer turns up and you've just manicured the lawn to perfection. Your hedge is straight and you give them a line read. And the property is instantly worth 50 grand more. Leave a box of that That's on the front. That's not, I'm just joking. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you are looking at an idea thinking, is this something that you want to be involved with? You know, step back and go, let's look at what people's behavior is around this and maybe do some research and figure out how long is this going to be here for? You know, everyone's talking about during money supply, it was, it was crypto, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's AI. But I think most Kiwis don't have a good handle on AI stuff. Nah. And it, I almost like am a bit, um, what's it called when you're the opposite of something? Cynical or skeptical? Nah, contrarian. Okay, yeah. So I'd rather look at stuff that has a bit more of a proven history that's been around for a while. Mm. Like the, the story of easy crypto is incredible. Um, and, you know, you might want to get on the next one or whatever or we'll start the next one. But- like plumbing's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And like there's some pretty big New Zealand companies that uh, provide plumbing products or the shipping company or the courier that delivers it or, mm. you know, there's just so many different things and angles that are going to continue and have a massive runway ahead of them and you can join it in different ways. The best one is like we've got a client who was a builder, pretty good. Um, and he's probably nearly 40 and shoulders fucked, completely buggered, like hard man. And said, I just, I could keep going, but I know it's going to ruin my life. You know, I won't be able to lift stuff. Yeah. So we went and started doing building reports for buyers. Wow. Now he's got nine guys. Sheesh. Yeah. Do you reckon that, do you reckon he's not making any money on that with nine people? Yeah. And like. It's still the same vehicle, but a different vehicle. Like it's still the same industry, but he kind of went and went to fix a solution, uh, provide a solution to a problem that he had with himself and then went to the market with the same viewpoint of like, where's a problem that I can help with and provide a solution and then charge for it. Yeah. And it's turned into a bigger, ver a bigger company than his building company. I think that sh highlights the value of like really trying to learn an industry. So then finding something you're really interested in because it then makes it easier to learn about it. Mm. And that's when opportunities start to to come to you. And you can outlearn other people because a lot of people don't want to put in the yards to learn shit because we get so fatigued with it from high school, primary school, university. You're like, oh, I'm fucking done with this, man. Like these haven't really led to too much. I've, I'm starting out of that and I've got a $60,000 salary and my life's really tough because it's expensive out there. So then you go, right, I'm probably going to put my learning to the side. Like I feel like I've done my time with that. But a good two years just going hard on an area that you're really interested in and all of a sudden you can see things other people can't see. A good example is now that these podcasts are going onto YouTube, you know, someone's like, what are you doing for YouTube thumbnails? I'm like, mm. I don't know. They're, like, they're really important. I'm like, oh, and then I read about you know people paying hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. to perfect a YouTube thumbnail. And you think, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and talking to Healthy Kelsey the other day on her podcast, she saw people putting recipe um, eBooks and stuff together. She's like, fuck, that's easy. I've got a Canva account, and yeah. that, so that was the trigger for her to think like, I could probably do this. And then she wrote eighty recipes in in two weeks and has gone to another level and ended up doing books and stuff like that but same thing then someone's like well you need like photos for these so then she has to hire a mm. photographer and they have to have that skill if the photographer doesn't learn that skill they don't get the call mm. they don't get it they live and they're like oh man this is a low wage economy man <laughs> fucking hell we, we stand on people all of this stuff but someone has learned how to put recipes out there and wants to figure out how to do that. They have learned how to use Canva. No one came to them and was like, hey, probably should just show you how to use this, Kelsey. <laughs> Something's triggered her to do that. And then, okay, you're going to need photos and then goes and finds a, a good photographer that she can trust. And that's basically her whole journey is finding people that have the knowledge because they've done the learning so that she doesn't have to. Yeah, that's almost like, yeah, a lot of startup businessy things journey, you know, like you mm. end up with enough motivation to force yourself to go and do something and you know there's only one way to learn and it's taking action so some key themes in here mate fake titties 
real money. There's obviously some real money in fake titties. Yeah. It's lesson number one. To get inquisitive around what people are doing when you see helicopters and jets and things like that, you know, don't go down the, oh, uh, fucking greedy, it must be nice for them and whatnot. Get intrigued by it and see what you can learn and then start doing some research. And uh, again, this industry alone is growing at 7%. Uh, that $5.34 billion is US dollars as well. Mm. So it's probably more like an $8 billion industry by 2030. Then they have to continue to, and it, no doubt technology will improve in that space too. And they've got to um, change them over and stuff. But that industry is growing at 7%. It's possible. Things can grow. Um, so don't rely on the government to say like, oh, the GDP is going to grow at one point. 2% or whatever. <laughs> like that doesn't need to be your percentage. Like this industry don't care about that. No. They're like, well, this is we're just gonna keep catering to demand. And I'd imagine that the snowball will grow where this will become even more acceptable and it will just the seven percent probably become nine percent. Um think about what vehicle you're in, think about how you can continue to learn and outlearn other people and then apply that learning to a wave of a industry or something that is going to continue to grow into the future and then things will happen for you and you'll look back and go well that was really easy but for people who don't get it they'll look at you in the helicopter and go asshole must have inherited it yeah it's an interesting one eh? this just reminded me of a conversation i was at dinner with my dad the other day and i was like i think i'll get us a plane <laughs> sure. <laughs> and he's like, I don't think you and I need a plane, like <laughs> the way I drive and shit. But, you know, I was like, that just made me go home and look it up. Like, I'm not a pilot. Hmm. You know, what's the story? And it's surprisingly easy to go and become a pilot. Wow. Not, a, not a, a commercial pilot, but like I'd never, ever looked at it because it's it just – it was one of those things that was like, it's almost special. It sounds like you have to go to, you know, get a university degree. And then, you know, my head is going to, you know, 747s and these big planes and the process of that. And I've heard how long it takes someone to become a pilot. Not the case. Yeah, wow. Well, but you just have to look into it. Yeah. You know, and like, if I didn't just say that, I wouldn't have looked and realized that, like, I probably will become a pilot one day just to fly around for, for no reason, but... Easy as that. Sorry yeah. about it. But the fact that like something like that triggered me into going to look and finding out that there is a solution to a problem that is easy. Mm. Yeah. Just yeah. searching. Yeah. I think a good thing to remind yourself is to ask yourself the question, like, why not me? Yeah. You know, why, why could it not be you? Whatever it is, whether you see, you know, someone having the fancy lunch or, or whatever it is that they're doing or, you know, crushing it in the gym or in good shape or whatever and just think like, why not me? Like, what do they know that I don't know? And attack life with that angle and who knows what mm. becomes possible for you. Yeah, man. I'll go get my helicopter license. You buy the chopper. Good boy. We'll take a <laughs> Lambo. Oh, what? I'll go, I'll go to buy the chopper. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not agreeing to that. <laughs> um, we can hire one, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I own nothing, and I'm pretty happy, mate. Um, we can take the Lambo there on the way, maybe. Yeah, park yeah. it in the hangar. One day. Righto. Hopefully, there's been some lessons to get people thinking in there. We'll see you on the next episode of Keep the Change. Keep the Change.